How's it going, Katanning? Welcome to the Greatest City in the World podcast. We are back for our third Mental Health Monday of 2022. Uh, Miss Joanne is with me again today. Uh, we have our first viewer submission, too. Yes. We're going to go through a question here in just a minute. But uh, Joanne found an interesting quote that I think fits well with the topic today. So why don't you start with that? Right. It fits well with the topic today and as well as where we've been yeah. um, so that, you know, we can carry the momentum forward. Um, the quote is from Rita Moreno. And for those of you who don't know who she is, she starred in the original um, Broadway production of West Side Story. Oh, uh, no, no, no. A- apologies. She s- starred in the movie. She starred in the movie. Okay, yeah. She may, have all, all, she may have also been on Broadway, but she was definitely in the movie. And they're doing a remake. And so interviewing her is out there a lot. And I happened to catch one. And she was talking about her life and where she's been and what she's done. And the thing that she said encompassed it the most was that and this is where the quote begins. Having to examine yourself and finding value in yourself is the only way to be whole. Uh, and we had talked last week about Socrates uh, quote saying that an unexamined life is not worth living. Yeah. And so if we put those together, it's life is worth living when we find value in it, right? In ourselves, in our lives. And that's what we're doing here. Absolutely. It's good stuff. And uh, i I don't know. I really find the, I find a lot of value in having these conversations because it's like an opportunity for me to examine myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, oh. while you're listening, if you have the opportunity to examine yourself, like these, it's good to just take the thirty minutes. It doesn't just have to be information intake. Right. Like, right. There Absolutely. can be a real working out as as these things. Um, well, happen as well right well and as we progress that's my hope right to, yeah for it to be much more of an internal interfacing if you will with the information and seeing how it applies specifically for yourself with yourself yeah so uh our our uh, question today or i guess mm-hmm. concern uh this is from anthony he posted on the uh, facebook page on our post there it says i'm concerned with the alarm of teenager violence school threats from untreated students who suffer from mental illness i feel that parents are often in denial when their child has mental health problems then it eventually peaks to a out of control level therefore creating family instability do schools need to do more offer therapy or employ a school psychotherapist or students who otherwise can't access therapy easily. Uh, what can be done to prevent bullying? Um, and let's see, and then not just some more stuff. We don't educate students young enough in school before they get to the age where bullying hits its peak. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot to that, obviously. There's a lot uh, to it. Maybe more than we could cover in 20 minutes here. Right. But, um, but I think that some of the principles that we're talking about, like, you know, Obviously, you deal, I think, mostly with adults, although I know you've um, helped, mm-hmm. helped with children as well, right. or younger younger adults, I should mm-hmm. say. <laughs> <laughs> but also children. Yeah. And so at what age is it appropriate to start teaching them to examine their life and look at finding <laughs> value and all those kinds of things? Like, when do you think kids have the capacity for that? Um, day one. Day one, um, yeah. <laughs> honestly, in the, in the sense that um, we need to be modeling what it means to be able to um, examine our lives in the sense that we can manage what it is that's happening around us and in us, right? Mm -hmm. And when I say day one, obviously that's not a formal teaching of, right? Right. Um, But the healthier we are as adults, the healthier, healthier we are as a society, obviously by just being a part of seeing healthy behaviors and mental health being modeled, it's something that's going to be learned. Unfortunately, the reverse has been happening. Yeah. Um, The short answer to that question about school is yes, right? We need to be doing more, but we need to be doing more in the sense that we make mental health a part of overall health and overall living, and it being something that we understand to be paramount in skill building, right? Um, because we do have um, 
psychotherapists in schools. We do have student assistance programs. We have a lot of things out there that are in existence, but unfortunately, as the uh, commenter said, it is an emergency kind of thing when it gets really bad. And then parents also are in denial, not because they are bad per se, but because when we have difficulty handling our own selves and our own emotions, right, it's going to be highly threatening and um, uncomfortable, to say the least, to think now that our children are having those difficulties as well. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, I would, I would guess that a lot of emotionally unhealthy children are coming from emotionally unhealthy adults. Right, which and, is not a blame game. Right, not, yeah, not a blame game. And the, <laughs> I think the denial can come in was like, a lot of times we are so good as, as adults, like we have learned to kind of cope and hide our issues from the world. Hide, and right. so when it comes out in our children, it's difficult for us to yes. say, oh, that that's probably in me too. Right. And that's difficult for me. And my kids are, my kids are young, but mm -hmm. my nine-year-old, like when she comes back with an <laughs> attitude or with a sarcastic, you know, tone or whatever. And that's the expression too, by the yeah. way. <laughs> or she's like picking on her sisters and like, well, where did that come from? Well, it's probably either me or mom. And, you know, I know it wasn't me, so I must, no, I'm just joking. But Gotta like, be mom. <laughs> but I, you know, it's like the things that we say come out of them and right. it can be difficult as a parent to like admit you're wrong mm -hmm. work on yourself right. so that your kids can then be healthier and be able to move forward right. so right. Um, and then again I mentioned not a blame game because we haven't been learning this as a regular forever and the only reason that we're even now able to talk about these things in a way that most people have a reference point is because of the pandemic and the things that um, were illuminated because mm -hmm. of the pandemic, right? Um, so that's a long history of ignoring mental health. Yeah. Um, and it shows. <laughs> and it shows, unfortunately. So we were talking a little bit before we started, you know, kind of where does uh, the where does bullying come from mm, from right, an, right. from an emotional mental health standpoint? Right. Uh, maybe you could mention a little bit of that and then we can go through like, you know, right. maybe some potential fixes, okay. some potential things that could be done. Right, right. Uh, so give me that first. Okay. Well, um, the bullying component, right, has a lot to do with not being able to find value in ourselves. And uh, my pet peeve policy, particularly in schools, was that everybody gets a trophy. Mm -hmm. And I know it was really well-intentioned, right? We wanted to just make everybody feel better but that's also a hallmark of poor mental health handling right it was a reaction it was the quickest fix we're seeing that kids aren't feeling good and don't know how to move through it so give everybody a trophy yeah no so when we hear it like that right it sounds kind of ludicrous yeah but in it it seems to make sense because we don't know how to handle the emotions that are difficult that we just want to make better yeah. So when we talk about bullying, right, the kids, it's an acting out behavior. And um, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the term acting out, it really just means exactly what it sounds like. There's stuff going on inside that we don't know how to manage, so we act out. Yeah. Right? And in that acting out, we're trying to gain access to feeling better for ourselves. So in short, in bullying, we're trying to take that kid's trophy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the understanding of what it means to recognize a very important point, the difference between emotions and feelings, not the same thing. And emotions are just energy and motion, a stirring sense of something being the same as when we felt that way before. Yeah. That's it. But the thought attached is how we end up feeling. And we talked a little bit more in depth about that la last episode. So if you didn't see it and you're kind of like, huh, what does that mean? Check out la last episode and you'll get a better understanding of what that is. Yeah. Um, but that core understanding, helping our children to recognize and understand that from the beginning, right? And about 10, 11 years old, kids really start being able to grasp what it is that these concepts mean and it's really pretty cool because then they bring their own selves into it again which is the whole point of this um, in a way that they're reflecting on the 
bullying behaviors either they feel themselves wanting to do or might be doing or have been victims of um, because it's about those ages when it starts coming out. Kids start jockeying for individuality and trying to find their value yeah. and because they haven't learned how to find it internally they or even understand what's going on internally right then it becomes acting out and they try to grab it. Yeah, I think I think of that in terms of like generational components. So like I was probably at the beginning of the trophy. Everybody okay. gets a trophy generation. Like okay. I would be like an old millennial okay. in that in that um, age group. And so when I go back and kind of look at history and like what what um, what generations kind of got it right, so to speak, mm. and you know, we have like the greatest generation that okay. was the ones World fighting in like World War One, World War Two, mm-hmm. like that area. Um, they kind of got it right, I think, because they 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 were forced into finding value, and millions of people had to die in order for that to happen, yeah. which is not uh, not the right, no. not our ideal scenario. Not our ideal way, like, it's not but... like oh, we want World War Three, so our kids will grow up. Like that's that's not so the way. So they'll face real hardship. Yeah, but then you had boomers that kind of went into this real consumeristic um, mindset, mm-hmm. and I think that they passed on to their kids like this consumerism mentality Mm -hmm. it was like well we'll find our value in the in the stuff that we have yes and that didn't work right and so when the when Ah, the gen when the gen x started to raise their kids Mm -hmm. they were like well i didn't feel like i was valued and the stuff never made Uh, me happy so uh, here's what i'm going to do for you everyone gets a trophy and then Mm -hmm. you'll know that you're the best and you're special because that's what i never felt and that'll fix it for you Mm -hmm. but i think that kids have like a they have like a innate innate sense that that is not true right (laughs) like when you get a trophy but you didn't win Mm -hmm. you know that you didn't really get the trophy like you know that you didn't earn it and there's almost disdain for which then compounds the problems that are there already yep and so they're they're still like this striving for like no i want to i i i they told me i was special Mm -hmm. but i know that i wasn't right but i want to be yeah and I yeah. need value somewhere. Right. And how do I be, yeah. right? And that's the missing link. That's the part that we're not helping children or adults <laughs> understand how to bridge that um, space, if you will, from yeah. I want to be to how to do it in a healthy way that really allows that skill and characteristic to drop in the sense that it becomes who you are rather than this striving, frantic kind of having to do, right? right? Way of being rather than having to do. Yeah. Yeah, and I I just, um, man, I'm really passionate about that because uh, these kids are so valuable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And they they have, have, like, this next generation coming up, they have such a talent and such a knack for technology. Mm -hmm. Like, they are going to be incredibly valuable in so many ways, and they have just this enormous potential. Mm -hmm. And to see that kind of being squandered is really, Mm -hmm. really frustrating. Mm -hmm. But it's like when we try, anytime we try to satisfy the desires that are inside of us Mm -hmm. with any, like, fakeness from the world, it's always going to make it worse, not better. Right. Always. And I, I believe that we're seeing the fruit of that. Mm-hmm. Like when we see, um, like recently, I don't know how closely, you don't have anyone in high school anymore. So. Not anymore. Trey graduated. So. <laughs> My late in life baby. <laughs> so um, the there was, a, there was a fight that was like very prominent on Facebook mm-hmm. that was okay. like a, a thing that happened. And then the, the thing with Armstrong Hockey where they were mm-hmm. you know, bullying this, oh, right. this female hockey player right. from Mars. and. Um, you know, those two incidents kind of happened right in conjunction with each other. And everyone was like, we must have the worst school in the history of the world. I don't think that that's true no, at all. Not even close. Um, not even close. But it but it had that perception for a moment, which is, I'm assuming, where this comment is coming from, too. Okay. And okay. so it's like, okay, so we know where bullying is coming from this place mm-hmm. of trying to find value, mm-hmm. um, trying to, like, I don't know, be somebody, so mm-hmm. to speak. Yes. Take their trophy. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so... We know where it comes from. So we're, I mean, in a, in a dream world, mm-hmm. okay, what would what would the solution be? Like if you had total reign over Armstrong School District <laughs> and could do whatever you wanted, what would you do? Well, I, I would, um, I don't call it teach, right? I call it education because yeah. education is the facilitation of discovery from within. And that's how we make it ours. To teach means to make to know, to like force it down their throats, right? So... 
I would educate all of us, right? The whole Armstrong County from the from all of our siloed agencies to understand how they go together and then particularly within school how they go together meaning body mind and emotion those are the they's right it's really a one um, interdependent means of functioning that allows us to recognize understand and be informed by right our body minds and emotions and be informed by such an important component because we're not tabla rasa we're not blank slates right we are have spirits already and already are formed with hopes desires and wishes and within those we need to be able to recognize a way to identify move through and manifest Mm. and so that's what I, I call the entire program when, W-I-N, I intact, B, me. B for body, M for mind, and E for emotion. But M and E create me because, as I was speaking earlier, mind and emotion are so closely related for how we feel that they can't be separated. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh... I mean, it's and it's really what we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks and every conversation that we've had on this channel. It's mm-hmm. like these principles that we're learning as adults should be being taught to our children right. as they're going through situations right. because it's like there's always going to be conflict in life. Always, right. And conflict resolution, right, or zero tolerance. <laughs> Again, I shouldn't say it like that because it sounds like I'm making fun. <laughs> um, but they just are incomplete they don't bring in social and emotional learning and i know a lot of people are hearing that term but it's a term that's being applied to a very narrow sect um it and it shouldn't be in the sense that we don't um have a means to grasp onto adaptive information unless it's social and emotional learning. Mm. And so that's why it has to be an experiential kind of recognition and understanding of what's happening internally. And then knowing, having a framework of how to move through it and gain meaning and value from it. Mm. Yeah. I, I think when we when you talk about conflict resolution, so much of the stuff that I think happens in school, it's like, okay, how do we um, how do we cope with this, or how do we muddle through with mm-hmm. this instead of like, how can how can both sides grow right. because of this right. conflict? Right. And I'm not sure that that's how we look at it, just as a societal thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, right. most of the time it's like, okay, it's too easy on Facebook. Like you have a fight with somebody, and you're just like, well, blocked. <laughs> And that's not that's well, not a healthy. I mean, it can be healthy to separate, but it's not a healthy way to like fix the problem. Well, no, but uh, you know, when you're saying on Facebook, but that's what happens physiologically, right? Okay, we block, yeah, right, and then that, and again, as we get into more things, it'll become clearer how these components are interdependent. But that physiological blocking, that emotional blocking within our bodies has all sorts of ill health consequences. Right. Right. So But I think we're like training we're training the youngest generation through social media like that's how you solve your problems. Mm-hmm. You just you just ignore them, you stuff it away, <laughs> right. and then you move on to something else mm-hmm. to try to gather attention some other way. And right. it's like, man, we're we're breaking our kids. <laughs> right, right. And you know, and and there's so then you like you were speaking, there's so much to be said for their knowledge and their technological abilities mm-hmm. and, and everybody, every generation brings value to the world, right? But in that recognition that if there's not a balance with the rest of what life requires, then it just compounds further and further and further, and we have more and more broken people and more and more broken functioning. Right. And that's why I call this intact. Okay. Yeah. So that's the dream scenario, okay? Mm-hmm. So you would have that's an the... education program in the school <laughs> oh, that oh, every kid I'm would... I'm going to get there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that every kid would go through, and it's like, right. okay, now they're all learning how to do these things, and that would be amazing. Okay. But the... And we'll have to cover that next time. I apologize. Oh, okay. You got to go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more then about um, how to do you know, how to move through that right. well, uh, or like what can we do practically? The, well, the body component that is in episode one, I believe, yeah. um, is 
the starting point. We have to have the body in rest and digest the way God created us to function. We are designed for function and purpose. And if it's that functioning is not intact, right? If it's broken because one of our components, body, mind, emotion, are not interfaced and interdependent with the other to work like a cog in a wheel, then it's broken. So yeah. that body component is huge. Begin there. Yeah. And kids 11 and up can do that. At 10, kids 10 and under, we can help their bodies reset or be in the way they were created to be simply by holding them on our laps and doing those exercises ourselves. Mm. Okay. It, 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 um, it's a herd response that then bolsters their parasympathetic functioning. Yeah, and that's kind so of... begin there. That's what I was thinking, like, man, if we can work this out in ourselves, I know when I am more healthy as a person, my kids are more healthy. Like, that, that automatically translates. Mm -hmm. And so if you're out there wondering, like, well, what could I do? Well, start with you. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then I've found so much, like, with kids at church, different teenagers that I get to interact mm -hmm. with, the more one-on-one -on -one interaction that you can have, like where you're actually picking out the talents, gifts, and abilities that you see in their life right. and actually empowering true, right, them right, to use it. Right, that they're true and real, right? Yeah. There's, there's a real reference to something yeah. they know is going on. And we're not just like speaking in generalities, like, right. oh, you're really special, or right. but you're not. They're like, no, I saw the art that you did, mm -hmm. and that was really incredible. Right. You should you should press into that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a real gift from God that you have. Mm -hmm. And then they be begin to find, like, they connect their their intrinsic value from god mm -hmm. if they can connect with that they're right. like it, you just see kids light up mm -hmm. yeah, literally yeah. right like you can see his light reflected in their faces yeah. and again that's universal try it out you know whether or not you believe it's god you'll see that light up yeah so as teachers as parents <laughs> as community members man the more connection that we can have with mm -hmm. these kids teaching them some of these principles and how to actually move through and grow through conflict mm -hmm. rather than just shove it down and push it away, right. man, we're going to be much better off as a community. Yep. We'll be dynamite. All right. <laughs> That's it for today, guys. If you have more questions, comments, put them down there, and we'll use them in future episodes. And we'll dig a little bit deeper into this one next time. See you next Monday. Okay. Bye.